Hello everyone and welcome to another edition of El Supercast. With me today is Ray, who I met from a convention long, long ago. And he was dressed up as Raven from ECW. How are you doing today, sir? Fantastic. How are you? I'm doing quite well. So let's get right down to business, shall we? You have a novel that deals with some very interesting topics. Yes. The first question I would like to ask you is, what made you decide to be a writer? What was it about writing that motivated you to say that, you know what, I can do this. This is something that I can accomplish. Well, Pito, it's a variety of reasons, but one of the major reasons off the bat is seeing creative media and how lame and generic a lot of installments are nowadays. You know, they it's always saving the world, vengeance, and plot lines that really require no thought or no, really, like, nothing um, past... Um, you know, tunnel vision or, or whatnot. In other words, um, you look at writers, you know, back in the day, you know, with um, Homer, with the Iliad, Odyssey, you know, Voltaire, Chaucer, uh, to Shakespeare, um, Milton, and, you know, Kafka and the like. And then you look at creators, especially when it comes to uh, anime, like um, Akira, Ghost in the Shell, Vampire Hunter D., installments that really defined a generation yeah you know your cowboy bebop oh, and yeah, stuff definitely but i really wanted to define my generation and not just have it be about endless waves of memes or pop culture references and have it be you know forgettable i don't want to do that i work very hard to ensure that our future generation will at least have something redeemable for future generations. Something that people can talk to and say, hey, you know, I read this dude's uh, book or books or whatever, and it's different. It's not the same stuff. Well, that's good. I think that uh, it's a good thing that you decided to write this book. So why don't you uh, say the title of the book so that everyone else in the audience can know? Very well. Uh, it's called Zeratopolis, uh, also known as uh, Neutral City. The zero, zero is zero. Uh, I got that from, like, you know, how protons, if it's got, like, a plus sign, electrons have a negative. Mm -hmm. uh, neutral would be, like, zero. And then, of course, the polis part that's the city so uh it revolves around four preteen boys that they die due to different circumstances and they end up in purgatory where when they they're there they gain um they lose their humanity little by little they gain outlandish abilities like one kid what he'll do is he'll slow down time and uh summon an army of broadsword building warriors and another boy will, he'll unleash a magnetic energy field to, to trap and vacuum up uh, his opposition. And together they duke it out against illusions. The, basically there's this ivory tower full of um, millions of men and women and they're attached to all this machinery. They've got monitors and other things like this. They're, it's like revolving on a conveyor belt and it's just like going back and forth and things like that. Mm -hmm. So they imagine, they create illusions, which are their, the manifestations of their dreams and beliefs that turn into different forms. And these kids are basically fighting them and they have to fight them in order to survive. So there's an element of necessity. It's not just, oh, well, there are these kids that have these powers and, oh, let's just go to a fantasy world and just shoot the shit and be retarded. But uh -huh. no, no, th there's an actual point to it. There's an actual process. So, um, and another way to look at it is like with most superhero installments, there's always a hero you know, hero type character and they're always protecting the innocent from the villains. Yeah. But in Zeratopolis, 
what's happening is that the innocents are actually creating the evil for the kids to fight. So that's what's uh, helps set it apart from most of the lot. Well, that's a very interesting premise. Uh, Thank you. Do you think that you're going to be able to maybe perhaps in the future write another book? Or is this your one hurrah? Oh, no, no, Pito. There there will be several hurrahs down the road. I, I, I'm <laughs> That's actually what I like to hear. An, That's what I like to hear. That's good. I'm, actu- I'm actually 270 pages into my second uh, major novel right now. So, yeah. Oh, good. Excellent. Yeah. Of course, that one is uh, focusing on uh, religion and cult worship with a touch of, like, the big budget action appeal, but, like, with actual story and, you know, none of the nuts Zachary. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what was it about when you were younger? Was there a book that motivated you into, you know, pursuing this avenue? What really inspired you to be... A writer well a couple things uh, one of the things is I've put up with a lot of bull crap dealing with other people you know being uh, like many young people going through and have it being forced to conform to standards and deal with a lot of pricks and assholes uh-huh. and ie tyrants and stuff like that and not, and living with people who are just like, well, you got to deal with it. Well, that's the way it is and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, no, that's the way you want it to be. Mm-hmm. You want to keep the status quo the way it is. But I wanted to be a writer to vent a lot of that frustration and that confusion and anger. And I feel that a lot of that um, is visible in the action scenes, the intensity of it, the dialogue. And um, another thing is my love of uh, classic rock and metal. That's another, it's, see, listening to music is always great for me because when I write an action scene, I either got Slayer or a little bit of Metallica. If it's something a little more like a deeper kind of reflection, either Dio or Black Sabbath or, and if it's just something really bizarre, I mean, you know, maybe go with King Diamond or, you know, I mean, I, but it's a lot of, um, a lot of that music is a very, very pivotal uh, part of what makes my writing process a lot easier. Um, Oh yeah. There, there's a connection between the flow of music and the flow of your brain waves. I know I know that's a proven thing. You know, it's pretty interesting, you know, I, I I've read some of what you're what you got so far and I'm really digging it. I hope that other people will have a chance to check it out for themselves and uh spoiler alert, uh coming pretty soon, it's going to be a webcomic. So that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, um, we're looking forward to that. Another uh, adaption. So um, another thing is that it, the novel is actually available on Amazon. It's um, uh, twelve dollars. Um, I'll I'll give uh, Pito the link. Uh, do you want it now, or or no, we'll do it like you can give it to me later after the show is done. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Okay. All right, so we're almost into the stretch of the podcast and i have enough time for one last question so uh this is a bit of a random question who's your favorite cosplayer versus your favorite wrestler hmm um well i'm not really big into like the cosplay world i mean i the only cosplay i've ever done was uh raven like you mentioned before but Uh uh but was, there I mean, some, was there something that stood out in your mind? Like, oh, that's pretty cool. I wish I could, you know, hang out with these people. Yeah. Um, 
La Latino Taku. I mean, she was kind of cool. I actually uh, ran into her a couple of times. Uh, once at Kineticon, she was uh, cosplaying as Poison from Final Fight. Oh, nice. And um, she even featured a picture that I took of her in the hall there, you know, right by where the staircase and the escalator are. Uh -huh. And then um, I saw her again at um, AB uh, last year, and she dressed as um, Esmeralda from uh, Hunchback of Notre Dame. Nice. That yeah. is very cool. Yeah. And it was funny because I was looking for her the entire time and I was like trying to find her. And um, I ended up, I finished dinner at the California Pizza Kitchen. I'm walking out and I end up seeing her walking in the other direction. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Uh -huh. But it, it was really cool. And um, I ended up getting her picture, I even got a picture with her. And um, I had to run because I had to go. I was going to the uh, Puffy Amiyumi concert. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 I remember that. Yeah. That was great so, that they were there. Yeah. Um, as far as, um, I, I really haven't been watching much wrestling. I did binge watch Lucha Underground uh, several months back. Mm -hmm. I did get all caught up, and um, that's some amazing stuff. Oh, yeah. Five star, five star matches, like every single episode the writing is a little spotty at times like there are moments of utter greatness yeah you know especially like matanza's reveal and everything uh to the gift of the gods championship and um but then there were times like with uh you know you know revenge stuff like with um, black lotus and, and el dragon azteca and everything like that so and there were some other things like uh, and, and even cage with the the, the killer gauntlet or whatever. I mean, uh, some of the writing, you know, leave is, you know, spotty hit or miss, but, um, the wrestling is where it counts. And Dario Cueto is a pretty, pretty awesome substitute for Vince McMahon for corporate con. Oh yeah. All right. So last but not least, I want to ask you a website that you would like to give props to before we get going. Um, well, I'm not really active as much as I used to be. I'm more focused on my writing, but, uh, but do you have at least one? I always ask it of all my guests. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I guess wander you for their great deals on train and bus tickets. Okay. Well, there you go. All right, everyone. This has been another edition of Velt Supercast. Take care, everyone. Goodbye. Have a good evening.